back. Why aren't you trimming? Really? Oh my gosh, am I gonna have to do this by hand every single trim? What is going on? Trim, 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 trim. Nope. Oh, come on. No. Oh, so this isn't going to work. Well, it looks like I need to make a quick phone call. Thank you for calling Melco Technical Support. Yeah, this is Aaron with Parsons Design. Yeah, I'm having some trimming issues. <laughs> So what I got today is needle plate trimming problems and uh, I just got off the phone with tech support and I got one machine that's doing really good and the other machine that's having issues and I found out that an older model this BT if it's working you're good um, but there's an updated model that came out that uh, Melko actually made a video on and then you can just replace the knife only and just re uh, put a new knife. So I'm gonna be making that upgrade to my machines to make sure that this works. So in the meantime, I'm gonna swap my two uh, current needle plates to see if the trimming issues are the needle plate. <laughs> the benefit of having two machines, I guess, is if one's not working right, I'll swap parts with the other and see if that part itself is causing the issue and not something else with the machine. So. That's what I'm going to try today and I mess around with this even though I'm replacing it because I still got stuff to do while I wait for things to ship. So here we go. Now we'll uh, let's clean that out. Key is to use the grossest toothbrush you have laying around your house. It works better the grosser it is. <laughs> we'll clean that off. And then we'll make the indication that that's the way the knife goes. And there we go. It might not be a bad idea to have an extra one laid around. So it's like, just order an extra one just to have it, just in case, because it's always good to have extra parts. If something happens, uh, you can keep getting work done and have backup. All right, so this is what I was actually hoping to see. This one, which the needle plate that was in this machine now being flipped, is trimming just like it was over here. So that tells me that the knife assembly and all that stuff that was in that one is not working properly because now this one's having that problem. So um, you can see it dragging stitches. 
like right here and this is annoying to have to clean up that's really annoying to have to clean up after it's done when it should be able to work properly and uh, and trim it and not have to deal with that at all so um, yeah parts are on the way I'm gonna swap that out uh, in the meantime we'll wait and uh, hang ten until that stuff gets here so in camera time this will happen very quickly me I'm gonna get to work and uh, you'll see it in a second it's gonna take me a couple days so I guess I'll see you in a second two weeks later all right so it's here it's been two weeks which i think is a little bit too long to be manually trimming my machine but um, we're going to replace and get some sharp knives and to start we need a sharp knife to open this box so let's get going all right so here our replacement parts so this is what we're working with so we have got a lot of embroidery that's been backing up a little bit um, when this is your full-time job and this is how you make a living you got to keep these things running in tip-top shape and I'm sick and tired of manually trimming this thing out so I hope I hope I hope I hope this is gonna fix the problem. The BT1 that Melko had talked about on the uh, a video, which we'll put a link in that one so you guys can see, um, this one clearly doesn't have the BT uh, little engraving on there. And what I was instructed is that that means that this knife is changeable. Melko does tell you when you buy these machines that this is a self-sharpening system, and that's what really sold me on it because um, with today's embroidery machines, having automatic trimmers, and uh, lots of trims in a design is super helpful but if it's not working it's a real pain in the <laughs> so let's get these swapped out and uh, let's get them back to work okay so remove the fasteners down here on the bottom this one actually is an older model I just had Melko send me two uh, so in the future if this one something happens to it, we'll, we'll be able to replace it. Just a knife. Uh, but it's actually trimming fine. And what Melko said is if it's trimming fine, don't replace it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I always say, but I don't want to set myself up in the future. So there's the little BT thing that we're talking about. And essentially they look almost identical. So I don't really know what's the difference. I can't help you there, I'm sorry. Here, look at them both side by side. Yeah. And the machining tolerances could be something that's that's different and small, small little change in there, but I don't, I don't know. Being a knife guy, I know looking at this right here, as that slides into this looks like carbide down there which would sharpen the the trimmer knife as that slides up and in there so it's kind of cool having an auto sharpener in there or a, but does it work perfectly in my experience not so much it's not a perfect system so slide that knife all the way to the back Got a hook up right here on this little tab. This is what pushes it forward and back down the sewing arm. And as long as we drop it in there carefully and make sure it falls into the little notch, you can see it when you do that. So then we put our fasteners back in the bottom of the needle plate here, but do not tighten them. There it is. We're just gonna keep them loose at this time. So that's good for right now. Do not start your machine at this point. We're gonna hit emergency stop. So then we can reach up here and we're gonna grab the, I don't know what this thing's called. Okay, we're just gonna grab this shaft up here and we're gonna turn it 
and the needle's gonna fall right down inside our hole. And you can see the movement. <clears throat> so at, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and kind of center that in there. No, we are gonna center that in there. Then we'll tighten it up. Once those are tight and that doesn't move, check that. Then just let go of the emergency stop button by turning it and it'll reset and go back up on its own. So putting these arms on, so I can run my easy magnet hoop. And we're making our own trim test. So. Here's a quick little pro tip. Before you tighten down your arms here, leave these a little loose so that you can adjust this. Put your hoop in so it slides in, locks in place. Get it all aligned. And then once it's all aligned, then tighten it. Then it'll slide in place perfect every single time. I know it's kind of a easy little tip, but it's super useful. Now it's in place according to the hoops that you use. And every time you stick it in there, easy. Pro tip. Okay, so I got my magnetic hoop. I'm just gonna hoop two pieces of backing. Uh, no sense in wasting a jacket and taking a chance. Those are easy. And then we'll slide this in the machine and uh, hit go. What I did end up doing was making our own little trim test. So I wrote trim test and I put a trim between every single letter uh, in this setup here. So that's what's gonna happen and that's what we're gonna use. To me, I know there's a trim test set up in Milko, but this one is something similar to what you're doing every day when you're running left chest or hats and stuff like that. So um, in my experience, it's like set up something that's close to what you're kind of already doing and work and use it in an application that works for you. So that's what we're doing. Every single trim when we did this between every letter was perfect. It cut thread nice, it trimmed every single one of them. So now we're gonna set it up on this machine and try it again. This one did it too. Every single one was a perfect trim. So now I think what we'll do is um, start loading a actual customer job because we got a lot of embroidery to finish and uh, troubleshoot them while actually doing some work. I know it can be risky, but I feel pretty confident that, it, that we fixed the issue. If you're having issues with your machine and your trimming is not up to par, um, contact Milko Tech Support and ask them about this same issue with your machine and uh, try uh, changing your, your knife plate and see if that makes a difference.
this customer job. Seem to be trimming and working way better than they were, especially on this one. It was horrible. It wouldn't trim at all. Well, all right, that looks so much better. I think we fixed the issue. Oh, I just want to mention, hey, thank you all so much for the comments, the likes, the subscribes, and uh, growing this channel here with me and joining me. Hopefully we help somebody out there today. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by Melco or anything like that. Um, I just do this because I like making videos and I like making embroidery and helping people. And uh, this is just another way. If you guys are out doing the same thing I'm doing, uh, Maybe we helped you out there today. And so I will leave a link in the description below for the knife plate and anything else that we used in this video that can maybe help you with your trimming issues. So thanks for the support. We'll see you in the next one. ready to rock and roll.